When I first started here in South Australia as a youth pastor, we had a, a sort of senior high youth group at our church. You know, about 35 kids met in the big rumpus room back of our house, uh, three or four leaders. And for a number of years, it really went well. It was strong. It was powerful. The kids were pumped. And, and my Christian life was, you know, soaring as well. In year number four, for whatever reason, the youth group just didn't go as well. Yeah, no, just kids just didn't seem as keen to show up. They weren't as enthusiastic when they came. Didn't bring their Bibles, didn't bring friends. And it was just, it was struggling a little bit. Now, here's the scary bit. As a result of that, I noticed that my own Christian life started going downhill. I started to get discouraged. I started to spend less time with God. I was no longer as keen for Jesus as I used to be. And I suddenly realized I had had my placed my trust in the wrong thing. See, for four years, and it went well, I didn't notice it. But I was trusting in my ministry going well to make me feel good about being a Christian. And it wasn't until God just pulled the rug from under me and the ministry had a struggle that I realized I had put my trust in the wrong place. David says confidently in verse 1, In you, O Lord, I have taken refuge. The result of that in verse 1, let me never be put to shame. There is the first decision of a generation changer that you say to God, I will trust in you alone. Or as David puts it in verse 6, From birth I have relied on you. You brought me forth from my mother's womb. I will ever praise you. You want to change a generation? Decision number one, you say to God, I will trust in you alone. 